Let's bring in Dr. David Winter from Baylor Scott and White Health to talk about the latest on this race to vaccinate. Good morning to you. Hello, Sonia. Good morning. So I, I do want to start with Pfizer and uh, its vaccine for children. I'm wondering your thoughts on this. You know, as we know right now, it's been granted emergency use authorization for kids 16 and up. And next week in Texas, those kids, 16, 17 year olds and up, can receive the Pfizer vaccine. So what does this mean now that they're expanding the trial? Well, it's good for all of us because we know a lot of the virus has been spread by younger folks who don't get sick necessarily, but can spread the virus. So I'm anxious to get it done there. Uh, no reason to think the vaccine won't work for them, even for younger kids. Now, younger kids, we need to test to be sure and make sure the dose is correct. But no reason the vaccine shouldn't work well there. Vaccines have been around for young kids for a long, long time, Sonia. All right, so speaking of young people, spring break, COVID surge, do you think it's going to happen or not? Boy, I sure worry about that a lot. You know, cases have been going down in this country, but look around the world. Right now, if you look at Italy, Poland, Chile, parts of France, they're in total lockdown because of surges there. Germany is being said and Brazil is being said they're in a crisis mode. Mexico's right behind them. So cases are surging around the world. Do we have enough protection here? Have enough people got immunity from even having had it or a vaccine? Are people still being careful with masks and distancing in high risk areas? We'll find out soon. The next couple of weeks are going to be kind of scary. Got my fingers crossed, Sonia. Uh, Dr. Winter, a common question I'm getting from people who are, you know, maybe a little hesitant to get a vaccine. They're wondering, does the vaccine interfere with other prescribed medications? For instance, if you uh, take a high blood pressure medication or you take a statin for your high cholesterol. The vast majority of all prescribed medications do not interfere with the vaccine. Flip it the other way, the, the vaccine is not impaired by most of those uh, medicines either. Now there's an exception. If you take an immune suppressive medication, that can lower your response from the vaccine. Does not mean you shouldn't get it? You may not have as good a response, but it still can have some protection for you. You might ask your doctor about that. One caveat also though, anti-inflammatory drugs, Aleve, Advil, Ibuprofen, those potentially could lower your response to a vaccine, so don't take those right before you get the vaccine. Go later, if you can take those later if you have symptoms, but not right before the vaccine, Sonia. Okay, that's good to know. I've also gotten this question, people are asking, is there any chance of a nasal COVID-19 vaccine? You know, they're saying, I don't want a shot, I'm kind of weird about needles. What are your thoughts around this? Like a spray, mm -hmm. like a kind of like a flu mist? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. You know, if the virus, the coronavirus enters our body typically through the nose, the mouth, spraying up there with the vaccine, but the concentration makes perfect sense. They're actually doing some trials in animals now. I hear they're favorable. No trials yet in humans, so we need some studies on that, but I think it's a great idea, and I expect they'll be available down the road, yes. Okay, good to know. Uh, I want to talk about this AstraZeneca vaccine. Your thoughts on whether it's good or not. So many conflicting stories here about this vaccine uh, in the last really week, week and a half. Yeah, they've had a rocky road for sure. First, it was uh, declared that they caused blood clots. Then a big study says, well, there's some blood clots in folks who got that vaccine, but no more than the general population. So that's probably not true. Then AstraZeneca said our vaccine is 79% effective. An independent board says, no, it's not quite that effective. It's 76%. So they've had a tough time. More studies to come with that. Sound like it's probably going to be safe, but they need to manage our publicity better and give some facts out that we can actually depend upon. Yeah, I think the whole thing was really confusing for a lot of people. Finally, Dr. Winter, um, this opening up eligibility of COVID vaccines to anyone, uh, 16 and up really, technically next week. Um, are there enough vaccines out there? I mean, we've heard local folks say we need more vaccines from the state to meet the demand. Uh, your thoughts on opening up right now with this eligibility? In most places right now, there are not enough vaccines. So we're gonna have to be patient with that. I see a mad rush for vaccines starting next week, but it's just not gonna, they're just not there. Now they're coming. We'll have plenty of vaccines eventually. So if you want to get a vaccine, if you're underage, don't have any other co-medical conditions, you might want to wait a month or two. We should have plenty by then. But right now, there's not going to be quite enough. Okay. Patience is a virtue, you know. Oh, it sure has been. A little breaking news for you, though. I got an appointment. I'm thrilled. So I will be vaccinated soon.
Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Good, I've been good. waiting for this day for a very long time. Dr. Winter, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.